The best known example of a cyclic AMP action in eukaryotic cells is the fight or flight response to adrenaline, a hormone so polar it cannot get into target cells, in this case liver cells. After adrenaline binds its receptor, the G-protein mediated response, not shown in detail here, activates adenylyl cyclase, which results in cyclic AMP synthesis, which is shown here. Next, two molecules of cyclic AMP bind to an inactive protein kinase, a four subunit protein, which then dissociates. The cyclic AMP bound subunits, shown in yellow in this cartoon, are not the active enzymes. But the other subunits, shown in purple, that have come apart from the tetramer, are now each active protein kinases that can catalyze phosphate transfer from ATP to some target protein, which as you can see, they do. The target in this case is called glycogen phosphorylase kinase, because when activated, it will catalyze phosphate transfer from an ATP to an inactive enzyme called glycogen phosphorylase, shown here. You may recall this as the first enzymatic activity in the breakdown of glycogen. The active glycogen phosphorylase catalyzes the hydrolysis of glycogen to glucose 1-phosphate monomers in the liver. You may also recall that glucose 1-phosphate is converted to glucose 6-phosphate, which would become dephosphorylated so that glucose can leave the liver cells and circulate to the brain or heart or other cells to enable fight or flight. One last note. The series of phosphorylations is called a phosphorylation cascade, more accurately a phosphorylation amplification cascade, because a small amount of starting catalyst, the protein kinase A here, can produce a large amount of active glycogen phosphorylase at the end of the cascade. This is of course the very nature of enzymes.